Hey everybody, it's Professor Demansky for the 326 class. A short little video to get you going on the weekend. Uh, in a nutshell, last night uh, only about half, maybe two-thirds of you showed up in class. Uh, and I was really, it, it was a long day, let's put it that way. So we canceled class and I promised I'd put up a little video about what I would be doing in class. But I'm only going to talk for a couple of minutes, so it's certainly not a whole class. It's just enough to give you an idea of what's going on, where we're up to in the class, and what you might want to look at over the weekend in terms of the textbook and your next lab. So in a nutshell, let's, let's, let me remind you one thing. Uh, the lab, lab threes were not a great experience for a lot of you. A lot of you uh, flat out cheated. Uh, you know I dropped the lowest grade on the lab. I will drop the lowest grade on the quizzes too. But uh, some of you don't have any tolerance. You know, if you got a zero, you got a zero. So you really have to do good. So uh, recursion is a good place to start. Uh, and just let me tell you what it is. In a nutshell, recursion is a programming technique that lets you write a program, a subroutine, if you will, a function, where in the middle of the function, you call on that same function. You know, as if you're calling another sub, excuse me, as if you're calling another function, you call on, <coughs> excuse me, you call on yourself. You just call on yourself repeatedly over and over and over again. With each call that you make to to that same subroutine, you basically are defining a smaller version of the same problem. And you keep calling on it. So if you've got a problem that's this big, and on the first call you make it half as big, and on the next call you make it even half of that, and on the next call even half of that, and you keep calling, 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 until you get to a trivial case. A trivial case says, oh, if something, then return this value. Don't call on it anymore. And that return will return back to all the calls that you had made earlier, sending back values, all right, ultimately till you get all the way to the top, but your answer bubbles up to the top, and you're all done. It's very powerful. You don't have to write a lot of code. You don't write loops. You don't write loops. Basically, you need what I like to call an escape clause. You have to understand your problem, so you can, you can have an if statement, the escape clause, that identifies the trivial case. If you don't have the trivial case, you're gonna be calling and calling and calling, and you're gonna get into a recursive loop of calling, 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 you never get out. And then you have to control break to end the program, you can't debug it, the world ends. So you have to define a trivial case first, and then you have to figure out how to t take your problem and make it smaller successively. The best example of this is something called a factorial program. And I know you've all seen factorials before. You know, uh, something like three factorial is defined as three times two times one. Four factorial is four times three times two times one. Five factorial is five times four times three times three times one. Basically, uh, the factorial function is defined as factorial of n is really n times n minus one factorial. If you think about it, it's n times n minus one factorial. Like four factorial is four times three factorial. Three factorial is three times two factorial. Two factorial is two times one factorial. But one factorial is a trivial case. It's one times one. And you just return it back and back and back and back and ultimately you get your answer. That's how it works. Without a blackboard and not me drawing a picture for you, you'll lose your mind, all right, just watching me. But that's the essence of how it works. I strongly urge you to take a look at the book. Look at the, it's the very first example in there about factorials. It's a trivial amount of code. It's like pseudocode. It's like, pseudocode is like four lines. I mean, really, it's that trivial. And they do a, a nice little trace of the three factorial problem. They, why, why is this happening in this class? The way it's implemented, and you don't have to worry about this, but every time you make a call, the compiler generates, a, has a little stack, and it saves all your parameters in a stack. It pushes them on, and with every successive call, it does another push, and another push, and another push, until you get to the trivial case when the pops start happening. Pop, 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 pop. Hence, it's related to stacks, and that's why we're doing it in the class. Uh, take a look at the program. It's nice and short. The lab assignment is also a very short program, not difficult. But uh, you got to think about it. For the most part, it's uh, it's what I like to call the min-max program. You give it an array, an odd number. All right, give it an array. You got to find the minimum and maximum values in the array. No loops. No loops. Minimum, max, both the minimum and the maximum of the array. Not sorted. All right, it's a not sorted array. And the algorithm, and it's stated on the assignment, is basically, if I give you a one-element array, what's the minimum and the maximum? It's that element. It's both the min and the max. If you have a two-element array, all right. You just compare one to the other. The bigger one is the max, the smaller one's the min. These are trivial cases. But if you have anything but a one element or a two element array, then you have the case where you can 
split the problem here. But basically, it's really saying, if you have a non-trivial case, take the whole array, split it into two small problems. The problem where you find the minimum and the maximum of the first half of the array, and then once you get those answers, save them. And then find the minimum and maximum of the bottom half of the array. Once you get those answers, save them. Then compare the max of there to the max of here, and the min of there to the min of here. You'll get a, a winner and a loser, if you will, a, min, a big maximum and a big minimum, and you're done. All right, sounds easy. All right, I'll go over all of it in class, but uh, don't go crazy. It should be pretty straightforward. And uh, take a look at the book. Uh, the, the book has a million examples, something called Ackerman's function, greatest common denominator, uh, the Taras of Hanoi. Uh, Taras of Hanoi is a very classic problem. I hope to bring in a prop to demonstrate that in class if I can figure out who stole it last. Uh, it should be okay. It's a, a nice, well-defined topic, well done in the book. Don't worry. It's not the end of the world. Uh, and that's it. So I hope you take this to heart. Make a little time over the weekend. Just look at the one example, if that's all you could do. It'll only take you a little bit of time. And I hope this wasn't too painful for you. All right? Hope to see you all in class on Tuesday. The next lab is due April, not the 15th as posted on the website, but the 17th. That's the last day we meet before the Easter break. Okay? Or the spring break, I should say. That's April 17th. I'll change it on the website anyway. All right? Have a great weekend. I'll see you all on Tuesday. Bye-bye.